Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Today, as you can tell by the title, uh, is going to be a bit of a story time video. It's a lot to take in and I'm just kind of like everything is sort of getting back to normal in the last couple of days. And I wasn't sure if I wanted to do a video on this, but it has been a pretty life altering event and I think, I don't know, I just learned a lot through this and it's still, the, the whole thing isn't even really done yet. I do want to apologize in advance just as a disclaimer. I'm going to be pretty vague about some details because not all of it I really want to share publicly, but I'm going to tell you guys as much as I am comfortable with because because it happened and anytime anything really happens I'm pretty open with you guys about it and yeah there were yeah it's just yeah I've never really like I haven't sat down to tell this to anyone I don't know in my personal life yet so essentially as you can tell by the title, I was robbed. I was at the Helsinki airport and I got a call from my local bank, a location that I actually haven't been to, but nonetheless in my vicinity. And they said, hey, so keep in mind, it's like five o'clock in the morning in Helsinki, Finland. I'm at the airport hotel waiting for my flight, you know, so that I could check in and begin my 24 hour travel venture back home. And I get a call and they say, hey, there's a name, we'll just call him Ross. There's a Ross here and he is trying to uh, deposit a check for $900 from your LLC company that I had just opened. This is a bank account that I just like, f I just finished creating with my accountant and I hadn't even gotten the paperwork yet because all of the mail and everything was getting shipped to him and then maybe one or two were getting shipped to me. But nonetheless, I didn't have the debit card. I didn't have the credit cards yet. I didn't have the check. I was expecting to retrieve them when I got home from him and from my mailbox. So I am like, wait, the, Ross is who? Like Ross is trying to do what? He's trying to put in $900? Because if he is, let's go, baby. Let him deposit. I don't know why, but let him do it. And they're like, no, no, no. This guy is trying to take out $900 from your bank account and I was like is he and he was he said he's using your checks like your physical checks with your company name on it and it's written out to his name like you like you're just paying him this and I was like wait how what made you guys realize that you shouldn't deposit it and he was like the signature didn't sync up with the signature that we had on your profile so I was like, okay, no, absolutely not. Please take the check from him. I have no idea who this guy is or why he's trying to take $900 out of my account or why he has an official bank check from my company written out from my bank, like the actual authorized checks. How does he even have those? So I'm freaking out in this moment. I'm thinking that I have somebody who has been stalking me and breaking into my mail and it felt so realistic for this to be the case because of the fact that I've had a peeping Tom before. I've like, I've been stalked in a sense. I mean, I wasn't, I say the stalker term lightly. It's just somebody picked up on my schedule and figured out, I have a whole video story time of, of that when I was a teenager of that happening to me. But basically I've, I've had trauma like this before in ways worse and so I was like oh my god it's happening again like somebody has found me and they're they know I'm not here and they are breaking in and trying to steal my things so I freak out I freak out I you know immediately message Riley and I'm like hey like something really sketchy just happened I need I need I need you to like lock the doors and like just be careful because somebody clearly knows who I am and is going through the mail and might be really upset that I just turned down the check because when he, when this guy was at the bank, they said, hey, we're gonna go call Jasmine really quick to make sure that this is okay. And he's like, oh yeah, go for it. What the, f like I don't even, I can't even comprehend in his mind how that made sense but he's like yeah okay yeah I'll, I'll wait here and so and then the guy called me after he's like yeah we we took the check and he left i'm like what okay so anyway that happens things come out i'm trying to be relatively vague <sighs> it's really hard to be vague with this though um okay screw it 
basically, I sent someone to the house to make sure that Riley was okay because I wasn't hearing back from him. I wasn't getting any texts or responses. So I sent my friend Anthony over and Riley comes to the door and he's like kind of tired and he's like, oh, no, no, no. Like, uh, Anthony's like, oh, uh, sorry, Jazz wanted me to come and like make sure everything is okay. She's been trying to call you and get a hold of you because I was freaking out. And I couldn't sleep at this point. Like, I had to be at the airport in an hour. And uh, so Riley, you know, he's like, I'm good. I was just sleeping. And I text Riley and I'm like, something really weird just happened. Um, and it, it wasn't the best communication on either of our parts. Uh, we were both a little bit irritated with each other. So we, I kind of was just like, I don't really want to get into it right now. Just like lock the doors, put a chair on the door you know, like watch the dogs. I'm just a little freaked out. And he's like, okay, you got it. So there was nothing that I could really do at that point. The check was taken. Um, I called, I called my bank and I was like, Hey, this just happened. I need you guys to freeze all of the accounts. Cause if this guy tries to go to another bank and pull out money again, who knows if they're going to be as aware or if they even made a mark on my account. I don't know. So I called the banks. Um, <clears throat> I couldn't file a police report until I got home and I wasn't going to be home for 24 hours. So at this point I did all that I could. And I just basically was like, I have a mess to deal with when I get home, which is the fact that someone is likely breaking into my name, my which is that someone is likely breaking into my mail and uh, doing identity theft. So very unsettling, but you know, it could be handled and it was gonna be a pain in the ass, but it could be handled. So after 24 hours of traveling, I land and I get a text message basically saying, you know, while you were away, I, uh, I brought someone into the home that I should not have brought into the home. Um, cause basically, because basically my one rule while he was living with me, um, like the one thing that I just really, really stood behind was, uh, not to bring random hookups into the house. Boyfriend, someone you're dating, totally fine. But if it's like somebody that you're meeting on an app for a quick session, I don't want them in the house because I just, I don't want them in the house. Uh, I don't know who they are. Half the time, like you don't even know their name. And so, you know, that was just, that was my thing. So the text basically is just saying, so he basically just said, um, you know, I let someone into the house and this is the first time I've done it. And uh, I left him unattended for whatever, five, 10 minutes. And while I left him unattended, uh, he stole your car. And I want you to know, you know, the car has been found and uh, the guy is in jail now, but you know, I'm really sorry, blah, blah, blah. That's not gonna be the focus of this video though. The focus is gonna be everything that came after that. So that's, the, that's, that's what I see getting off of my airplane after 24 hours of travel. And so I just like stopped and I reread it like five times cause I was like, no, like there's no way, but you know, he made it clear that the dogs were fine, that the condo was fine. And really like all I truly care about is that my dogs are okay. Because if something had happened to my dogs, like as Prince is sitting here right now and Duke is wandering around, like these dogs are the light of my life. And I, mm, I couldn't imagine my baby being you never, he my little baby. I, I swear, if I, if it was like he stole the dogs or like he like he left the door open and the dogs got out, I would just, oh, I couldn't even imagine. So um, I read that and I like drop all my things in the airport because I was just kind of I was just stunned. Like I didn't even know how to react other than just like, what? Like this is what I'm coming home to right now. Is my car is two hours away in a in a towing company yard and. A, like, I don't know, <laughs> my home has been violated because, oh, it was just very not good. Okay, so I ask him, I'm like, wait a minute, what is this guy's name? And he says, Ross. And I'm like, this guy stole my mail too. And he's like, wait, what? So it's a p us putting the pieces together. I get home. The first thing I had to do was like, I checked my dogs just cause like they're my life. And if they were my kids, I would have done the same thing. I just made sure that they were okay. And like that they were good. They didn't have like any, I don't know. Like they, they weren't limping. I just don't know. You just don't know. It was a stranger in my home. I have no idea. So I like make sure that they're good. And then I immediately go to my mom's jewelry box and I make sure that her things are still in there because 
Nobody else would know if anything was stolen from that box except for me because I know what is in that box. Everything was fine in there. Um, I went and made sure that my social security and my birth certificate were there. They were still there. So basically I walked through the door, I greeted my dogs, and I just immediately started going throughout the house to make sure like one of my laptops wasn't missing, that my camera wasn't missing, that my iPad or my computer software, like my gaming uh, setup or just anything like wasn't gone. He did end up stealing all of my weed too, which is very light, like it, whatever, it's weed, it's not the end of the world. But the reason I mention that is just because it goes to show the amount of violation. It just goes to show how violated my home was because my weed is just like in my nightstand. And so just picturing this guy like ripping open my nightstands, trying to figure out what was valuable, what wasn't, what was worth taking, what wasn't, you know, just going through my room and my home wasn't clean. I, I always have my, my cleaners come like once every two weeks, once every, this time it, it was once every two weeks, just to like, I like coming home to a nice clean place. So I always have them come. This is a few days after the fact. So the place is just kind of messy. There's like dishes everywhere and you know, there's like clothes laying around. My bed is kind of messed up and it just felt like I was walking into, it's just something that wasn't right. So. We talked for a little while. I basically just went to my room and started crying because I was just exhausted. I had been traveling for 24 hours. I was jet lagged when it was seven o'clock at home. It was like five o'clock in the morning. I hadn't slept, like I barely slept on the plane, maybe two hours out of the 17, 18 hours that I was in flight and then during the layovers, like I just couldn't sleep. And so I was just exhausted. My head was pounding. I was hungry. I was tired. I was unsettled. I felt uncomfortable. I didn't want to be in my room. I didn't want to be in my bed. So that was definitely unsettling. Um, so fast forward, I get on the phone with the officer on the case uh, the next day or the following day. It was like one or two days later. And he's like telling me about everything. You know, he's just filling me in on, on everything that happened. Basically, the way that they found this guy was he idiotically booked a hotel through my friend's computer and stayed logged into his email and then <laughs> went to the hotel that he booked. Like I just, the, the level of stupidity is just insane to me. So he does that. Um, my friend is able to find all of that information and the cops go and and arrest this guy basically while he's driving my car. So not only did this guy steal my mail and try to steal $900, but he drove my car to the bank and tried to steal $900. And the craziest part about this all is that if my bank had done what technically you're supposed to do is call the police because someone is, is doing identity theft or like writing a, a false check. Uh, they didn't call the police, so he could have been caught right then and there in my neighborhood. But instead, he left with my car to Anaheim and got to have his little joyride. So I talked to the officer and when he's talking to me, he goes, you're positive, like you have no idea who this guy is, like, cause he seems to know a lot about you. And I'm like, no, I have no idea who this guy is. Like, I, what does he know? And he's like, well, when we pulled him over and we're like patting him down, he's just like, oh, this is all a misunderstanding. Like, this is my ex-boyfriend and I'm great friends with Jasmine. We've met so many times. Like, we hang out all the time. Um, they gave me permission to take her car. She's in Helsinki right now. She's flying back from Finland. Um, I'm gonna go pick her up from the airport. Okay, dude, really? No, absolutely not. So as they're patting him down, they open up his wallet and they find several debit cards, several credit cards, like of just other people's belongings, other people's cards. I'm smiling because this actually feels like an episode of like a, like a drama, like, like CSI or something. I don't know, like law and order. It just is very like, my life was an episode for the last week because I was just like, what is happening? This like this is actually chaotic. So come to find out, this guy is an active criminal. He has been doing this across the United States for probably years, definitely in this year. Um, he has warrants out for his arrest in I think two other states and he, for some reason, has just gotten away with it this entire time. So if he hadn't stayed logged into that computer, where he had his like his confirmation to the hotel, this guy would have gotten away with my car. I probably would have never seen my car again. He would have gotten away with stealing a lot. He, he had a lot of my mail. Um, I'll get into that in a second, but he would have gotten away with basically ruining my life. <laughs> if 
financially. It would have been very devastating for me financially to have to go through this. So, <sighs> So I talked to the officer, I'm like crying on the phone because I'm just like, it was just, it was just intense, you know, and I finally come, I, I, I get my, my house completely deep cleaned, um, like everything cleaned because I just, your home doesn't feel the same after. I've talked to a few other people who have been robbed either with someone they brought into the home or just actually broken into and everyone just says like the first two weeks it just feels like completely violated, like you're stepping into something that isn't yours anymore and it, I, I didn't even expect that feeling when I came into my house. I was just more so expecting like to walk in and just check that my things were okay and go about my business because he wasn't there. Why would it mean anything? But then you see drawers, you know, drawers slightly cracked open and oh, it's just different. It's That's the only way I can describe it is that it is just different. So um, I speak to the officer. He basically ends the call by saying, just so you know, like this guy is a known criminal, like he's been needing to be arrested for a long time. So even if he did get out on bail here in California, he's got a no bail warrant for his arrest in a different state. So he would leave here and we would set him free from handcuffs and then we just handcuff him again and take him to that state because he has to serve time. Like this guy is just, he's done too much to not be in, pr in prison. So I was like, okay, <laughs> that's great. So um, I finally get to the towing company, I find my car, and um, he pulls it up, and I don't know why in my head there was not gonna be anything in my car, other than my belongings, the stuff that I already had in there. I have like an earthquake go bag from when we were having a lot of earthquakes and I was freaking out. So I had like waters and snacks and tampons and dog food and just like flashlights, things to like, just in a little like green bag. So that's all I was expecting to see back there. Um, so I open the trunk, and I'll insert videos on the screen for you guys. You can watch. Got my car back. Is this a crack pipe? Yeah. What? Yeah. Shut the... <laughs> oh my god! It looks like what, I, you know, I, was, I wouldn't be digging in there. It's pretty... No, because I gotta find my stuff. No, yeah, I understand that, but you, or you should put some gloves on or... Yeah, do you have gloves? Uh, but like... Oh, I am... This is all my mail. I just found all my mail at the bottom of this guy's bag. My Spectrum bill, my HOA, Delta Dental, DMV. This guy was about to try and ruin my life. Oh my God. So essentially I found a crack pipe. I found all of his clothes. I found my weed. I found uh, other people's clothes. I found women's shoes, which I later found out was Nikki stuff because I guess Riley had put it in my car. I, there's still like some questions around certain parts, but some of Nikki stuff was in there because I told Nikki, I was like, there was a laundry basket full of Steve Madden shoes. And I was like, and I threw them all away because I was creeped out. I'm like, this guy has a shoe fetish. I don't know. She's like, those are my shoes. I gave those to Riley so he could sell them. And I was like, got it. So I threw away a lot of shoes and someone else went through that garbage can, found a lot of great shoes. So that I guess is a benefit. But yeah, so after I'm going through, I then find, I find like four or five laptops that he's taken, nice Apple mouses. Uh, I found five cell phones. I found his cell phone sitting at the steering wheel, like in those little vents that you can like put your phone in to check the GPS. His phone is just sitting there. I'm assuming it's his phone. Um, I found more debit cards, I found a Cartier bracelet, people's watches, like things that probably had sentimental value to somebody else or or was just something that they spent their hard earned money on. Um, I found checks and then the creepiest part was he has this file, like a, like a briefcase. I opened it up and it's full of all of his victims' names. Like with their banking information, their names, their address, their office that they work out of, everything and for some reason the cops didn't take this out of my car because they most likely thought that it was my stuff like he probably was like oh whatever's in it like that's her you know they just they just they didn't do anything with it so there are a good four or five people out there who I have your laptop and I, the officer I'll get into that in a sec so I basically got rid of anything that didn't seem like it had value I got rid of like clothes which some of them were nice but like I'm not going to I'm not going to get all of these clothes back to certain people um but I held on to the jewelry I held on to the laptops the cell phones the cards that briefcase full of information of money that he's stolen from other people and I'm talking thousands of dollars transactions for 9000 6000 3000 1500 10000 like huge 
amounts of money that he is just stealing and not getting and somehow getting away with and um, I think the way he's been getting away with it is that he's just always going he's like co constantly on the run to somewhere new so I yeah I held on to those things because I would love for these people to get their things back I mean I don't know if they even would want it back at this point but if it's a cell phone you might have memories in there photos in there or I don't know, a Cartier bracelet, that's nice. Someone probably wants that back. I, don't, I just don't even know. So my mentality was I'd call the officer, I'd have them retrieve all these things and hopefully start slowly giving it to the rightful owner. Well, officers have more important crimes to deal with. I was hearing some of the cases that they deal with. Obviously, it's like, it's insane. Like, it's really terrible things that they deal with. So my case is not a priority and rightfully so, I get that. But. I'm like, well, what do I do with all, I'm not driving two hours again to Anaheim to go and deliver these things. So right now they're just, they're just existing. They're just waiting to have an officer retrieve them. I've been waiting for the DA to get back to me. It's been a whole thing. So um, I guess the current update is that this guy is in jail. Uh, he does not know who I am. If anything, he learned about me from chatting with my friend and you know, uh, asking questions and they drove and so when they pulled into the garage they probably saw my car and his mind started you know wandering but you know I found my mail crammed into the bottom of his go bag I found my weed scattered all around like I said I found the crack pipe just sitting at the top I found gun oil like I thought I was gonna find a gun in my car but I didn't thankfully so um, so now yeah the guy is in jail um, I got a call from the DA and they said, you know, it's uh, Susie's Law or something like that, where I can go and be there for the hearings. Uh, there was one on Monday, but I did not make it um, because it's like the pre-trial. So um, I'm still waiting to hear back yet again from not only the DA, but uh, one of the liaison, uh, one of the liaisons and the officer and the detective on duty and no one is getting back to me. <laughs> so it's pretty unfortunate um, because I don't want these things anymore, but I'm not gonna throw them away because it is people's personal information or just personal belongings and it just doesn't feel right to do that. So, so that's as much detail as I'm gonna give. Uh, I will be filing, you know, whatever I need to file. I'm gonna press charges. He doesn't even have charges on his account for trying to steal my mail and $900, but I, I have no way of proving it now because the bank that I went to shredded the check. So I don't know if the officers are gonna wanna go out of their way to go and interview the guy that called me. I just like, I don't know. I don't know how much can be done, but I'm for sure gonna press charges because it cost me $500 to get my car out of the junkyard. And it was just a hassle. Like it was, it was just a hassle and it was just stressful and unsettling and not fun to come home to. So things are kind of returning back to normal um, and I've definitely got a top of the line security system in my home now so that this type of thing just won't happen again. It, it was just a very big eye-opening experience for me. It was a big learning lesson when it comes to trust and and friendship and, and who you let in and out of your home and you know and I understand I, I completely see the fact that this was a mistake on my friend's part, but uh, it can't go without consequence because a lot of things were put at risk. And so, yeah, so, you know, things are okay. Everyone's good. Everyone's fine. No one's hurt. No one's like, you know, everything's good. Just things are changing. And, uh, yeah, I guess the next step will just be me like filing whatever I have to do to protect myself even more against this guy just because I feel like he's gonna be pissed. Like he's probably very mad that he got away with it for all this time and now he got caught and I was the victim in the case. So don't get robbed. Try not to. Don't let, don't let, so if there's any takeaway from this, it's just don't let random people into your home because you just literally never ever know. And this was an instance where, you know, it could have been a lot worse. He could have done something to my dogs. He could have done something to my friend. He could have actually gotten away and taken my car and stolen my identity and f screwed me over. Like he could have, he could have done all of those things. Um, this was technically the best case scenario, but still with consequences and just learning lessons and 
yeah, it's kind of a bummer when I talk about it again. I, I don't really talk about it very much anymore unless I see somebody and they're like, wait, so what happened? What's going on? Then I'll get into it, but I'm trying to just like move on from it because it was just a whirlwind of emotions. I was angry and then I was crying and then I was like really giddy and like excited and then I was crying. It's just, it's just been a lot. So yeah, that is pretty much it for this story of me being robbed. Um, I'm okay. I'm in good spirits. The dogs are okay. Like everyone's good. Uh, just life changes. You know what I mean? Small little life changes happening. Not small, pretty big, but I'm in a way grateful for this experience. This is like now the third most traumatic thing that's ever happened to me. Um, I'm happy it's not the first, I mean, I'm not happy it's the first, but like a, I've been through worse than this is my point. Um, but it's definitely up there with just like feeling violated and just not a nice homecoming. So yeah, like I said, if there's any takeaway, don't let strangers into your home. You never know who you're letting in. Like walk them out whenever they're leaving. Make sure you walk them out and you lock the door behind you and just never leave them unattended in your home, you know? You just never know, you just really never know, especially when it's through an app, you really don't know. At least at a bar or something, you can at least get somewhat of a vibe, and sometimes even then, look, there, there are horror stories with that too, but you just have to be careful. So, um, yeah, I hope that you guys enjoyed this story time, or just learn something from it, and, um, you know, just keep it positive in the comment sections, I don't want, anyone to get any negativity like not even this guy what he did was wrong and he's actually a thief and he's actually a criminal but let's just like try to keep it positive and light because this is already dark in and of itself so i want to keep it pretty lighthearted and just share that with you guys so yeah okay i'm gonna go uh i love you guys so much i appreciate you watching this video and um i'll see you guys in my next one Visitos. bye